Hi, welcome back. In the second video in our series on memory, we're going to continue our discussion on how memory gets utilized in SQL Server. If you remember from the previous video, we were talking about how every query uses the memory uh, during its execution process. We talked about how the data gets fetched from the disk, gets inserted into the RAM, and then from the RAM into the CPU. And also, when sufficient RAM is not available, how SQL Server goes ahead and moves some of that data into the TempDB, essentially performing an operation that is very similar to paging. In this video, we're going to continue talking something related to that particular topic, and that is paging. One of the important things that every DBA does when they install SQL Server is to grant a permission to the service account that SQL Server runs on. Now, this permission is called log pages in memory. And essentially what it does is it prevents Windows from paging the data that has been inserted into the RAM by that account. So say, for example, when I launch SQL Server and my service account is, say, SQL 1, and inside that service account, I've given the permission to log pages in memory. It means that SQL Server alone has the right to move that data out of the memory. In other words, Windows does not have authority over the data that SQL has inserted into the RAM. Now, if you remember from the previous video, I gave an example of how this is similar to the judicial system. So I'm going to try and do that again. Let's assume you're a country and in your country, you've got judiciary and you've got the legislature. And essentially what happens is that the judiciary is responsible for sending people into prison. Having said that, every once in a while, assuming that you're not so democratic as country, you will end up in a situation where the legislature puts its influence and pulls someone out of memory. Essentially, it's kind of like, you know, granting a pardon, so to, so to speak. So what happens in this case is that while the judiciary goes ahead and puts someone in prison, the legislature might decide, you know what? You're free. Get out. Correct. And this undermines the judiciary. And you can see how that causes all kinds of problems. Similarly, for SQL Server, it's important that when SQL Server puts some data in the RAM, it remains in the RAM because that's how SQL Server gives you the performance. If another process is allowed to remove the data that SQL Server puts in the RAM, it can obviously cause SQL Server to slow down. Now, you might ask, well, doesn't someone else need the RAM? And yes, they might need the RAM, but at the same time, Keep in mind that SQL Server is one of those server-side applications that essentially is the only thing running on a server, and there shouldn't be any other process that competes with SQL Server when it comes to RAM. Now, this is important because unlike other applications which might only use as much RAM as they need, SQL Server doesn't work that way. We've already talked about this in the previous video. SQL Server will try to use as much RAM as possible because the more data in the RAM, the better it is for performance. You don't have to do unnecessary physical I.O. So it's a good thing that SQL Server puts data in the RAM, and it's important that once SQL Server puts the data in the RAM, it remains there. Because if it's going to be pushed out, you're essentially not really guaranteeing that SQL Server will be able to answer the query quickly because you never know which data is in the RAM and which isn't. When this kind of operation happens where SQL Server is putting some data in the RAM and then suddenly can't find it, it's what we call a hard fault. Essentially, what it, means, what it means is that I try to put some data in the RAM, I can't find it, so it looks like we'll need to go back to the disk and fetch that data again. You can imagine how this can significantly degrade the performance of a query. And to avoid that is why SQL Server needs this permission to lock pages in memory. Now, to understand this, what you need to do is uh, there is a permission in the service account level that you need to do, which I'll be putting a screenshot of it in this uh, uh, in a minute uh, because I can't really share it on this uh, video at the moment. And once you grant that permission, what you're basically saying is that Windows cannot encroach upon the memory space allocated to SQL Server and therefore cannot pick that data out from SQL Server's memory address pool and put it into the page file, which is C colon. Now, this is a double-edged sword because, as you can see, Windows does not have the ability to page SQL Server data, and that is why SQL Server then goes ahead and pages its data into the TempDB. Obviously, this gives SQL Server a lot more control in, so in terms of maintaining asset properties, atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability, but you can see how this is problematic. And that's what lock pages in memory is all about. So when you launch SQL Server, you're basically saying that give SQL Server the permission to have a certain dedicated portion of RAM allocated to it, which nobody else can encroach on. So now that you understand that part, the next question is, well, what is the point of SQL Server having all this RAM if Windows crashes? Say, for example, there's a Windows process that needs all this memory and SQL Server says, well, you know what? I've got lock pages in memory. I'm not going to release my memory to the operating system. Well, if the operating system crashes, then naturally SQL Server would crash as well. This is why it's important to understand that the lock pages in memory permission basically prevents Windows from taking the data out of the RAM without SQL Server being aware of it. 
that's all it's doing. It's basically saying that Windows cannot paste the data that's allocated to this particular process. Having said that, Windows can still request SQL Server to release that memory, and SQL Server can then internally go about releasing that memory back to the operating system. So it's not really like as if SQL Server has complete authority over the RAM. Windows can still request SQL Server that I need some RAM, I need you to release it. I can't do it because you have log pages and memory permission, so I need you to release it on uh, as a favor to me. And SQL Server then goes about releasing a certain portion of RAM that is governed by the minimum memory uh, setting as well as max memory setting. So we'll talk about those things in a, in a future video. But essentially what happens here is that just because you have log pages in memory doesn't mean that you are the complete owner. SQL Server does listen to Windows and therefore when Windows puts in a request for releasing memory, if possible, SQL Server definitely tries to oblige and release that memory uh, when needed. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. And uh, I hope uh, these videos are informative. You're able to understand what's going on. And uh, again, uh, in the next video, we'll be talking about some of these other features. We'll start talking about what is the minimum memory, what is the maximum memory, and how they play a role in uh, the buffer pool.